Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we will continue our literary uh, selections. We will study this part. It's a poem for Paul Lawrence Dunbar. He's an African-American uh, poet and novel writer. He is um, a very talented and his talent in writing and uh, composing poetry started in an early age. Let's go on and discover this poem. Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Paul Lawrence Dunbar was born in 1872 and passed in 1906. He was the son of a former slaves. He was encouraged by his mother and he began writing poetry at an early age. Dunbar was inspired by Harriet Beecher Stowe's novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and um, in his own work, he honored people who fought for the rights of African Americans, as he himself was a former slave. Uh, he suffered from the same problems, obstacles, racial discriminations that Negroes during this age suffered from most of the time. Over the course of his life, Dunbar published more than 10 volumes of poetry for novels and four volumes of short stories. So his talent appears uh, early and he um, he was like a comprehensive writer, poet, and short story novels writer. So he was a talented poet. Let's see what else we can discover about him and let's discover his poem, The Sparrow, and let's see some political references that he uh, maybe aimed or not to be included in his poem. Let's take the first part of his poem. A little bird with plumage brown beside my window flatters down. A moment curbs its little strain. Ten tips upon my window pane and curbs again and hops along to call my notice to its song, but I work on nor heed its lay, till in neglect it flies away. Let's have this part of the poem in uh, some detailed explanation. The poet says that sparrows or birds with their plumage, which is brown feathers, come down to his window. They fly very fast and get closer to attract his attention. They also do a small noise to make a short, high or low sound to attract his hearing sense. So they flutter and curve, doing a great physical effort to attract the attention of man in general and the poet particularly. So after trying to attract the poet's attention, uh, you know, the bird felt sad or depressed uh, because of this ignorance and neglect. So let's see what else he uh, experienced. So fluttering and hopping are its means of attraction. So the only way to attract the attention of people or human beings to jump, to sing, to flutter beside them Sparrow started singing and added more effects to attract their attention. However, all tries met with neglect and ignorance. Finally, he flew away, sadly and hopelessly, when humans neglected him and let it fly far away with a broken heart. So here the poet draws a great image when a simple bird, uh, bird get closer to his window and he didn't notice this bird. And he got the feeling that this bird fly away in a broken heart that he ignored him. We have here many images and we have a rich figurative language to reflect. Let's first finish, then we can discuss this, uh, this um, element step by step. This is part two. So birds of peace and hope and love come fluttering earthward from above to still on life's window cells and ease our load of earthly 
else. But we in traffics rush and then too deep engage to let them in. With didn't hurt and since plod on, no know our loss till they are gone. So here the poet says that these birds are a symbol for peace, hope, and love, which are great values. So when they get closer to us, near to earth, they try to relieve us of the loots, problems, burdens of life, which is the earthly bells, okay? But we are very busy in the traffic of life. We're busy in our problems, daily work. Uh, we are engaged to the limit that we didn't uh, recognize it. We didn't notice these simple, pure creatures. Unfortunately, we discover and we um, recognize this after loss, after we lose them, after they already fly or flew away from us. So what a loss. We lose them, okay, um, and they feel, um, you know, sad and ignorance from the human beings and even human beings themselves lose the joy of listening and hearing and even looking at these birds let's see something organized about this paraphrase <clears throat> the poet says that birds are always a symbol of a great values like love peace and hope sparrows come to earth to relieve or help us get rid of lives loots and problems Sparrows try to get closer, but men unintentionally ignore them because of traffic obstacles or problems of life. People are busy with life matters that they cannot enjoy the songs or beauty of such a bird. Unlikely, we don't recognize them until they uh, leave or we lose them indeed. So this is what I was talking about. We recognize them, but after loss, after we already lost them. Let's have some sort, you know, one or two figures of speech. Okay, figures of speech, which is, you know, which are the images the poet draws, like similes, metaphors, personifications, metonymies, uh, musical effects, and so on and so forth. We will deal with only simple one or two just to remind you about um, these figures of speech. In each poem. So, and is our loot of earthly ills. It's a metaphor. Here, a metaphor is a figure of speech that directly refer uh, refers to one thing by mentioning another. Here, the poet liken or likens or compares these sparrows to medicine that cure our earthly or earthy illness and also likens the problems of life or compares the problems of life and loads and traffic to be like sickness or illness that could be cured. So he compares or likens birds to be a cure of medicine and he compares the earthly ills or sickness or problems to be like a sickness which can be cured by this uh, medicine. Let's see what else. With dead in heart. This is a personification. In a personification, you know, when you adhere or attract or give a, um, a human traits or characteristic to non-human creature. So personification, it occurs when a thing or um, abstraction is represented as a person. Simply to give a human feature to a non-human creature. And here, the poet compared the heart to a dead man that do not feel or act. So, he compared the heart to be like a dead man. And all of us know that dead people or dead human or creatures, they don't feel, they don't react, they don't do any activity. So, he here compared or likens the heart to a dead person. Let's have some sort of critical analysis, a political reference. As I told you, the poet was an African-American poet, and he suffered much from the uh, racial discrimination 
between white and um, black people or Negro during this age uh, in America. So Paul Lawrence was born in 1872. He was the son of a former slaves. So I think that he wanted to mention or liken the Negroes who were brought to America to this part of, which also brought to or uh, were brought to uh, New York after the um, 18th century as it was not available before this date. It was available in uh, the United Kingdom, I think. He's using poetry to reflect his suffering and personal experience with discrimination in America during this time. We know that literature is the mirror of ages, like each poem, novel, short story reflects more about the age it is written in. And here this is a Negro, an African-American poet, wrote this uh, poem during the age of discrimination, or racial discrimination in America. So I think he is mentioning something of his experience and it is reflected. He compared uh, his suffering or the Negroes to birds who are doing much effort, but nobody cared for them. Especially these uh, people were enslaved and brought from Africa and different places to work as slaves with the white Americans and they uh, had no rights. So this is some sort of a political reference or hint about the life of the poet. Let's see something simple also about uh, the poem. Some sort of two critical questions. What does the speaker do in response to the bird beside his or her window? The speaker was busy and ignored the sparrow. According to the speaker, okay, who do we or how do we plod on? To live heavily in a hesitation because of live loads, ignoring that bird. So to plot on like to ignore uh, or to forget about something or leaving without, you know, uh, consideration due to heavy loads or we are busy with something else. So here, this is the last part of this part. Let's meet in nature is what we see for a different writer. Um, we will discuss uh, three selections. Sparrow, uh, already, Church of Watchers, and Nature is what we see. Okay, for now we're going to stop. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And please, if you have any comments, leave it below the video. Thank you very much and see you next.